Okay, I know I look fantastic right now <laughs> for my first video, but uh, yeah, I thought no other way, this is rubbing on my, I'm gonna have to take this off. No other way than to start my um, review channel, or I'm gonna post whatever I want on here, but whatever. Whatever way to start my review channel or reviews, uh, than just being super real and honest. I have not showered yet. <laughs> It is what it is. Okay, so, um, and for those of you that can't see me, <laughs> that's good, I'm, I'm happy for you. <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're going to watch the Kardashians season four, episode two. I've already seen this, but I just kinda want to watch something and react to it in real time to kind of get the vibe going, you know, and see what my vibe is on doing these videos. So. We're gonna jump right into it and uh, check it out together. I remember this being a very dramatic episode. Like the first one was fun, and this one it was definitely a more intense. They're like, let's start out fun, and then we're gonna get we're gonna get right into it. Episode two. I mean, I do have to say that I think I know there's very polarizing opinions on Chloe, but I do have to say that I, she, in my personal opinion, she's a very incredible woman. Like to be treated so badly by this man and then still be there for him in a really hard time when he lost his mother and is now taking care of uh, his brother, I believe. I think it's his brother, his younger brother, that uh, just taking them into her home. I think I think that Tristan might be taking advantage of the situation a little bit for selfish reasons, but I, and, and that just makes me sad for Chloe because I feel like she just has such a good heart and just wants to, you know, genuinely help people. And I think people just trample all over her and just take take advantage of her kindness, honestly. And it's it it makes me sad. It makes me sad. Okay, first of all, I need a martini sommelier because I love martinis. Like that is totally my jam. <laughs> so Chris Jenner, props to you on the martini sommelier. And he's also very cute. <laughs> And that is, I feel like that is such a lie that Chloe says that she's never had a martini in her life. Like, give me a break. And in the first episode, she was talking to her, Kim. Uh, they were like, yeah, I've never had a beer before. Okay, give me a break. You've had a beer before. And she just said that she's never had an olive in her life. She's like, she's older than me. I'm 35. I think she's 37. And that is just, there's no way. Sorry, that was my door locking. <laughs> there's just no way. I'm sorry. The, the martinis are definitely an acquired taste for sure. <laughs> no wonder you're drunk all the time, mom. Yeah, I mean, martinis are like, you're trying to be fancy, but you're honestly just doing shots. <laughs> they all look very different. Chris is in like a full blown suit. Kim is in like a, a sports bra. <laughs> and, and then Chloe is in just like sweats but a full face of makeup. I love it. Is it just me or do we feel like Kim would be kind of annoying drunk? Like that wasted white girl. Like, woo! <laughs> I would love to get a tour of Chloe's house. I was looking online the other day to try to find something, like a tour that she did of the house and I could not find anything, but it looks huge like too big for me but it looks fantastic it looks beautiful and i want to see like the whole thing i also want to see chris's house although hers is a little like more gaudy than chloe's i think i think chloe's is a little more like modern chic and then chris's is more like oh old world you know whatever okay in chloe's so they're shooting a scene in her kitchen and in chloe's like in the back there's like a it almost looks like a wine fridge but it looks like there's about 20 bottles of vodka in there. <laughs> uh, it looks very intense. <laughs> so Kim's talking about her relationship with Tristan and I, I don't know, I have mixed emotions about him. Like they're, I feel like he's very conniving. I don't know if he can help himself or not, but I just feel like that he, like I was saying before, that he takes advantage of Chloe and her kindness, and I feel like she, cause, uh, Kim is talking about how he stepped up for her when she was going through her divorce, I think, and like picking up her kids and like being there for, for Kim. I don't know Tristan, obviously, like I've never met him before, I haven't hung out with him, but I feel like he 
manipulate situations for his own advantage. So I feel like he's being nice to Kim to either get back with Chloe or gain more fame or whatever, which that might be a cynical view, but <laughs> it's, I don't know. That's just my thought. Okay, Chloe's talking about Amari, but there is just, there are so many, and I know this is a very serious moment and I shouldn't make jokes or anything in this moment. There are so many drinks, there's a glass of wine. I think Kim took a shot of like tequila or something. There's like, there's six martini glasses. My dog's walking around if you can hear that. Um, and it's just hysterical to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, Chloe's talking about Amari and his epilepsy and his journey and it is just so heartbreaking and i think that it's great that she's talking about it on the show um then of course they're emptying the trash outside right when i'm filming uh the, the, i think it's good that they're bringing it up on the show to bring awareness to um you know different conditions that people can have and we just kind of if anything it makes us appreciate i think this is what they say here in a minute but it just makes us appreciate what we have um, and can appreciate that we we can do things and that we can, um, you know, that we are functional and that we should be very thankful for our, our blessed lives because most of us have very blessed lives. Sorry, I didn't mean to get deep there. Okay, back into the fun. I like how they're talking about Amari and then Kim, I mean, I'm sure it's in the producers are like, okay, talk about what you're going to be filming next, but it just seems like it's such a hard left. <laughs> She, they're talking about Amari and it's like a very sad moment and then Kim's like oh my god I'm going to DC and they're <laughs> talking about my class I love Kim Kardashian so when I make fun of her it's all in love but it's a very hard left hard turn I'm going to DC I'm there you know a, a company that I started they're doing a class on and then I'm going to Ohio <laughs> but she's going to Ohio to help a um I don't, I, I don't know what the term is called. It's like a, a victim rehabilitation. Uh, 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 I don't know. I'm not even going to try to know. But, I mean, she's going to go there to try to get somebody released from jail, I believe. So, anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I have mixed emotions about... In the last few seasons, I think even in the last few seasons of Keeping Up with Kardashians... Kim went on her journey about becoming a lawyer and doing all this prison reform, stuff like that. I have mixed emotions. I think that, you know, it's important if it's important to Kim to bring it to it's her platform to bring awareness to, but at the same time, I feel like this show is supposed to be like an escape of reality and supposed to be entertaining. And I think it does the best when they're you know being fun and like the first episode when they went to Kava it was really fun so I have mixed emotions about the really serious episodes and how I don't know I don't know I watch reality tv because I work so hard during the day and I just want to kind of like decompress but on the other hand I do see like it, that you know these issues need to be talked about so I, I have mixed emotions when Chris yells at the kids it is hysterical and then she goes, we're keeping that. I would be like, cut that. I lost my cool for a second with these little toddlers and I couldn't handle it. Cut that. But she's like, no, keep it in. <laughs> okay, Corey talking about licking Chris's lipstick to smooth it out is... I don't... I don't know. <laughs> I'm really happy for Chris and Corey. I think they're like a cute couple, but like the way they talk about sex, I don't know. I'm just not into it. <laughs> Also, Chris's jacket with the spikies all over it. I am absolutely in love. This is, I need this jacket. It looks so cool. <laughs> I could totally rock that jacket. Love it. I feel like Corey is really sweet too, Chris. I mean, they've been together for nine years now, I think. Uh, Corey doesn't remember where they had their first kiss. I mean, 10 years is a long time. <laughs> Chris goes, first kiss was at my house after Casa Vega. And Corey goes, no, we've been hooked up for a long time since Casa Vega. <laughs> that little slut bag, Chris. <laughs> but I think she's only been slept with like four people because she slept with Robert Kardashian, her first husband. She says she's never wore a condom either. Or she's never made anybody wear a condom, which is crazy to me. But if she's only slept with four people, right? Her ex-husband, Robert Kardashian... Then Todd Waterman, the guy that she cheated on Rob Kardashian with, and then, which she probably should have wore a condom with him because he sounded like a slut bag. <laughs> and then after that, she, 
Bruce Jenner, and then Corey. I mean, that's a pretty good track record. <laughs> that's a pretty good, tra- it's definitely not my track record, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, so they're eating this like, I don't know, it, I think it's sh- like huge shrimps or prawns. I don't know, they're huge. They cover the whole plate. It looks like they still kind of have eyeballs on them and tentacles and it looks really gross. And I'm a big seafood person and this is grossing me out. <laughs> Ew, see, they talk about sex so much. Corey was just like, so we could boink on date night. Do you think the producers are like, yeah, talk about, talk about sex because people like it. I wonder if that's the feedback that they get. I love that Kris Jenner is going to be in Megan Trainor's video. She, I love, I have a love affair with Kris Jenner. She's fabulous. And I think she's getting close to 70. And I think she's just amazing. And I think she's very smart. And I think she's, I'm going off on a little tangent. I'm sorry. I think she's very smart, very business savvy. She's, she makes very calculated decisions. But um, I don't know. I just, I just love like, love that she's just a boss ass bitch you know but i definitely have seen different like i am a kardashian fan through and through right like i've watched this series over and over and over and i've seen different sides of chris like on i think it was life of kylie she they portrayed her as like kind of mean and sharp uh in all of her scenes and then like on the kardashian she seems more like motherly and you know helpful and things like that but there's those little moments like that one where she was just yelling at the kids where she i feel like she's got a short temper and she can snap in an instant so it's very interesting to see but i love her (laughs) i love that she puts on full face of makeup and she's wearing heels to this date night with corey and this like fabulous outfit and she's like dripping in diamonds and to get a smoky eye on i just love every minute of it Okay, they're talking about sex again. Hello. He said, Corey said he was gonna give her a hard yes. Okay, now they're putting food in each other's mouths, which that's kind of cute. Like innocent cuteness I'm into. Uh, if we leave now before, <laughs> if we leave now, we'll, we'll, Corey will get laid. That's funny. <laughs> she's like, I have, <laughs> she has 30 minutes before she's in bed, wash face and asleep. <laughs> I'm sorry, but all of the Kardashian security guards are so hot and I'm in love with them. I feel like I'd be sleeping with all of my security guards. (laughs) if They all looked like that. It's probably not appropriate, but (laughs) just saying. It's so interesting in the show. One of the, I believe Harvard professors talks about imposter syndrome and how they want Kim to talk about imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome is, to my knowledge, I'm always scared to like make a a full statement because what if I'm wrong and people are just going to annihilate me for it, but whatever. These are my opinions. So, um, and I should probably say that in the beginning, but anyway, so imposter syndrome to my knowledge is where you are having a certain level of success, but you feel like you don't deserve it or like, why is this happening to you when in turn, like you've worked really hard for it. And so that concept to me is very interesting uh, because and not necessarily in success in my own life. I don't know why I'm talking about myself. We're talking about the Kardashians, but not, not in success in my own life, but like just with the relationships, like typically people like my personality. Um, and I, I always have like imposter syndrome of like, you know, why do they, why do people like me? Or like, why do people like, you know, I, I, I just don't get it because like, I don't deserve to be liked like that. It's very interesting. I've talked about this with my therapist and, uh, yeah, it's very interesting topic. So that just kind of triggered me a little bit. (laughs) Kim's boobs look so good in this interview with like the, I don't know, the grayish, top i wonder if this is skims and she's just got like it unzipped a little bit at the top and her cleavage is just perfection not too slutty (laughs) but looks good okay so kim said that she's sending everybody skims do they have boys clothes because it looks like there's boys in the room so what is she sending them (laughs) a shapewear (laughs) like women's shapewear like do they have men's shapewear now that i don't know about maybe like pajama set i don't know Maybe I'm in denial. Maybe she does have <laughs> boy stuff. 
we liked it. So Kim just said it, it's important to film things like this, like her going to Harvard and I think her prison reform and things like that. And she says, over like me fighting with my sisters over something stupid, uh, we like seeing you fight with your sister over something stupid, but I think I speak on most of us when the fight with Courtney about the wedding and the Dolce Gabbana thing has gone on for two seasons now and we're kind of over that. But other stupid stuff, I'm so into. Maybe let's just not make it a whole season <laughs> and a half. So Kim's talking about the imposter syndrome again. She's saying, you know, how did I get to this point? Are, you, are they sure that they have the right person? Um, and that it keeps her humble, which I think is an amazing. Like, as big of a star as Kim Kardashian is, I feel like she is, at least from what we can see and what she allows us to see, she's a pretty humble person, like for being a billionaire and has all the success and all these eyes on her and you know all this fame and everybody's in love with her and she's so beautiful. Like I think that to maybe a normal person that would destroy them. It would destroy me if I had all of this fame. Like it would be, I would be a monster. So that's a very interesting concept that she talks about. So Kim's talking about how Caitlyn told Kim that you have to do things that make you feel uncomfortable to grow. And that's something that I don't even remember who told me that, but I, that's definitely something that's been instilled in me as well. And I definitely lit, tried to live my life like that, doing things that make me really feel uncomfortable, like public speaking, things that I'm still not good at, like public speaking, but like doing things that make you feel uncomfortable and make you feel anxious and nervous are the only things that are going to help you become a better person you know, find new opportunities, all that stuff. So I love that. I love these little tidbits that Kim's dropping in this episode. It's very serious, but <laughs> it's very cute. <laughs> oh my God, Kim's talking about how Courtney and Kim would <laughs> call the 900 numbers, like the sex numbers. I, you, if you're too young, you probably don't remember this. I used to do this. I used to talk to guys. It's, it was so weird. You would call the number and I would always go to like free, um, what do you call it, pay phones? Because if you, for each number, you would get like 20 free minutes. And so then you'd record a message like, hey, I'm like 27, five foot 10, whatever. And then people could like click through and like you could live talk to them over the phone. And so I used to do this. So I know exactly what they're talking about. It's very creepy, it's very weird. <laughs> but it's hysterical that they would make guys go to the mall and then they'd stand them up. It's, it's hysterical and it's sad at the same time. <laughs> But I know exactly what they're talking about. And I, I'm glad those say, I hope they're not, I think maybe they do this on the show. They like call it. So I guess they're still around. But I don't know why you would need it with the internet now. I don't know. <laughs> I love that she's calling this on camera, this hotline. I'm sorry, but the guy that Kim is talking to on the phone, on camera, live on this hotline sounds so hot. I kind of have a sixth sense about like, it, I can tell if guys are going to be hot or not by their voice or like, I don't know, just different things like that. I feel like Chris, this guy she's calling, I think he's a hottie. Okay, so this store that Chloe is opening, the Good American store, it looks gigantic. Like, my chair is falling, sorry. But I, I, I've said this over on my other channel, but my chair, it like slowly falls. I probably need to get a new one. <laughs> but anyway, so the, the store that... Chloe is opening up. This Good American store is um, gigantic. This is crazy that this is her first store. And I think she says like she's opening three more. Like this, 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 this is a lot of money going out for these stores. Let me tell you, a lot of money. Oh, they're doing four different stores. I wonder what stores are opening. So they're opening Century City, Vegas. Okay, Chris is doing her music video with Megan Trainer. Love it. Megan Trainer is so cute. She's got perfect teeth. God, Chris looks fabulous in this poofy white cream and dripping in diamonds and her blonde wig. You know, big butt. <laughs> yes, Chris Jenner is the mother of all mothers. I've never heard this Megan Trainer song, I Am Your Mother. Has anybody else? Is it a popular song? Has it been released yet? What's happening? Chris is embarrassed to be in the music video. That's so funny. She looks fantastic in this video. They're showing little clips of it. I feel like they have a filter on her, the Kris Jenner filter. I've heard about that. <laughs> I like that they threw in a little like lightheartedness with Chris's music video to the seriousness of Tristan and Kim's prison reform. 
Oh my god, Chloe just called Tristan fat as a baby. <laughs> That's not nice. Good for you, Chloe. You set those boundaries. Don't let him trick you again. Yeah, what's going on with your house, Tristan? Because we need to know. Because we, we need to get out of this house. We need to get out of Chloe's house. Wait, Chloe just said she doesn't want to miss, be accused of misleading somebody about giving love. I think my chair is scooting down again. <laughs> this is going to be a constant thing, so just get used to it. Um, she said that she doesn't want to be accused of misleading somebody about love and that she's been on the other end of that. I wonder who she's talking about. Is she talking about Lamar? Or that's interesting that she said that. That's a very deep comment. Okay, Tristan just said that he doesn't want a, the, his kid to ever be embarrassed that he's their father. I think that ship's already sailed. Like you, you have played out your life in the media of treating not only Chloe, but all of these other women like crap. <laughs> Getting pregnant. Getting a girl pregnant while you are trying to get back with your ex and having another baby with her. That's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> like, I think we've crossed that bridge. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a Tristan basher. I'm sure there are people out there that, you know, see the good in him, like Kim earlier in the episode. But in my opinion, you've done what you've done. And I know in my personal life, like, I've made mistakes that were hard to, like, I didn't have any self control and I made those mistakes. So I get it. I totally get Tristan's perspective like sometimes you just don't have any self-control to do things but for him to make that statement like I think that I don't know I feel like the only thing that he can do is now move forward showing his actions and maybe that's what he's trying to do and maybe that's what he's trying to say because I kind of cut him off <laughs> but uh moving forward is the only way that you can prove that you're not an embarrassment and kind of not erase the past but make it better right like if he's a better human being and you know just acts better at least in the public's eye i feel like that he's going to be less of an embarrassment for himself and for his legacy his kids his two with chloe his one that he had yeah let's recount them all he's got two with chloe one that he had with the girl that he was dating before chloe and then one that he had some random i think that he got pregnant while they were trying to have their second baby so four kids right am i right on that but i do have to say okay another little rant <laughs> i do have to say like it's got to be so hard if you are a celebrity or a professional uh athlete that the people men and women have to be throwing themselves at you like it's got to be so hard to be like no a thousand times a day you know, versus us average people, we, you know, we're not being hit on a thousand times a day. So I do have to give Tristan that little bit of credit that like, that's gotta be challenging. Like all of these beautiful women are throwing themselves at you and you have to say no, 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 and be so strong. So that's gotta be difficult. Okay, so the producer just asked Chloe, is it hard for you to hear that Tristan calls you his person? So I'm really excited. I haven't seen this. I watched this episode, but this last like Tristan bit, I didn't get a chance to see. So this is all fresh to me. So I'm interested to see what she says in reaction to that. I love the, her response. She's like, if you, if I really am your person, then why are you treating me like this? Like that just doesn't seem to correlate. Ugh, Chloe is such a strong woman. See, Chloe said that you know, everybody's done dumb shit in their life. They just haven't done dumb shit on a public platform. like that intensifies it by a million. <laughs> like we've all done shady things or bad things, all of us, but we don't have cameras in our face, most of us. <laughs> we don't have the paparazzi following us and there's stories and this and that. So that's gotta be so intense. Amen, sis. Chloe said, hold yourself in a way that you will be proud of or that your kids will be proud of if they read something about you. Break him down, honey. I mean, yeah, he is, he has the power, that's what I was just saying, he has the power to change his image. He's the only one that can do it. And he can. That was a cute little scene between them. Ooh, next on. Oh my God, Scott asked her if they're hooking up. Kim's <laughs> pants split. She goes, I feel, I felt a breeze sitting on stage. Yeah, Scott has gained some weight, hasn't he? Okay. 
Yay, we made it through our first episode. I don't really know how to sign off yet because obviously this is my first time. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for joining me. And um, yeah, I think that I'm gonna post the video version on YouTube. So if you're listening to this, you can check out the video version. Uh, if you wanna look at me, if you don't, totally get it. And then I'm also gonna post it on um, Launchpad. So I think that pushes out to like Apple uh, podcasts and Spotify, all that stuff. So you can listen to me, uh, whenever, wherever you want. So, um, yeah, I'm going to upload quite a bit, I think, uh, cause there are constantly shows coming out, mostly reality shows, Kardashians, housewives. Uh, I think maybe I'll do a couple of movies, things like that. I don't know. The world is my oyster. Maybe I'll just do a couple of sit downs and talks if I have like some, some yearning to talk about something. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me on this one. And uh, yeah, I'll check you on the next one. <laughs> Bye.